Hey, what's up, DCS Wolfpack? Want to do a quick video? Uh, I guess there was a little bit of confusion on, and a mistake on my part on the last tutorial. So hopefully this will give us everything we need uh, to successfully get IL2 up to 4.1, 11.1, HSFX up to 6.0.1, and as well as having the uh, IL2 selector and everything else. So, uh, give me one sec here. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'll take you through uh, some of this stuff real quick here. Uh, first off, let me take you to uh, this little zip file that I did. So it's 26.2 megabytes. It's called DCS Wolfpack IL2 Mods, okay? And it's an all-in-one mod. So pretty much everything that you had, you know, uh, in the beginning, you can delete it or you can keep it just depending on, on what you want to do. So I'm assuming that you've named your main IL2 directory, IL2 Stormvic 1946. And in this mod pack, you'll see a few things. And I'll move over here quick. So in this mod pack that we have, there's a bin file. There's this IL2.fb.ini. There's an IL2 selector. That selector is not present, and I wasn't aware, in the HSFX 6.0 installation. So you just basically... You should be able to extract all of this into here, but if you're uncomfortable with extracting, uh, just in case I've named one of these folders wrong or made a mistake, you can you can just do it manually, and I'll take you ha through how to do that. So part of the uh, IL2 selector are these three files here. So basically, you take these, you drag and drop them out here. That'll give you the uh, IL2 selector, which is found right here. And when you run it, it just looks like this. And that's when I was talking about you want to change the settings and you want to run the classic mod game. Okay, so I wasn't aware that that wasn't included in the original package. Okay, other than that, uh, also is this bin thing. So, like I said, you can either extract it or you can you can drag and drop this into here and that and merge them. So here's the selector. These are all the files for the selector. So you'll I mean you've unzip stuff a lot of times. You should. You should know how to do that. But if you have any questions, let me know. And the last thing here, uh, I'm sorry, the second to last thing, the second to last thing here is the uh, JSGM. You can see hear my son in the background. JSGME mods, and um, you want to go into uh, JSGME mods here, and just drag and drop. These are all the mods that we're going to be using: dirt, runway dust. Uh, Pal, mini map, cockpit sound, smoke trails, and this is a modified smokes and flashes. So they actually will work together now, as whereas before they had a conflict. Okay. After you drag and drop these into here, and I'll show you the last thing that you want to do. The last thing is this neat program called IL2 Stormovic Stab. You just drag that into your main directory or anywhere else you want, and you basically run the executable in here, which is IL2 Stab. It'll it'll show up like this, and there's some options. There's some updated uh, graphics that you can run in, in case your resolution is a lot higher than what, what the game gives you. You can also run the default uh, IL2 1946, which you see it has limited uh, resolution options here. So if you go to options, you go to graphics, you can um, run the higher resolutions here. Uh, so after you do that, uh, there's some other cool stuff you can check it out. Like I run the no HUD text messages and warnings. That means like you won't get, or no subtitles for voice for pilots' voices. That means you won't get all the radio chatter in the middle of your screen, which is incredibly annoying. The no HUD text messages that'll give you your percentage percentage of uh, throttle and things like that. And actually, where your radiator is, some of the aircraft will not have a lever for the for the radiator setting or your cow flap setting, so you don't even, you don't know. Uh, so it's actually probably better to have this off. That's it's up to the user, which is cool. Um, some other things in here. So great application. Also saves your uh, campaign. So if you, it'll have a little uh, icon up here. If you right click it, if I can get this thing to work, right click it, you can actually restore your pilot career, and it'll keep. Um, this is for single player mode. It'll keep backups of your uh, pilot career because what happens is that um, every once in a while, if you mess up a pilot career or it gets corrupted, there's no way to recover it. This thing can recover for you, so that's pretty awesome. All right, so back to the main directory. And you drag and drop the JSGME mods in here, which look like this. So now, when you run JS, 
GME. It'll have the new updated uh, stuff that we've installed in the JS GME folder. Okay, just think of this as kind of a it's almost like a like a WinZip program in a way. Um, and again, left to right means you're activating it. These are all the mods that I told you about that we're activating right here. So once you activate those, they will go in a folder called mods. And they actually can just show up just like this. Okay, You don't have to worry about putting them in, in this files thing. So if you've already done that, um, you can just deactivate. Uh, the ones that you've already got, or you can leave them in there. It really doesn't matter. These will run either way, whether you have them in this format, just as a folder, or if you put them in this files thing. So if you notice, the earlier mods that we had kind of extracted into this files area. I know that sounds confusing, but it's it's just not. Um, if you've already installed mods previously, you can just deactivate them, and then you can delete the old ones. Um, and then just install our new our new pack. Um, that will uh, just give you these whole folders, and they can just go right into this mods folder. Some people were saying, "Well, I don't see a mods folder." You can create this, and I'm not sure if you when you activate this, if it'll create a mods folder for you. So that's pretty much all you got to do: create a mods folder, go to JSGME, and then you activate these, and they'll just show up just like this. Okay. And if I, I'll show you how this works. If I disable this, look, it just goes away, right? And if I enable it, it just throws it in here. That's all it does. That's all JSGME does. It's nothing magical. It's just a nice way for you to remove, add and remove uh, mods easily, okay? Um, you can just as easily, straight from the uh, zip program, just as easily drag and drop these into uh, your mods. It will work the exact same way. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to use this. It's just a lot easier. So if we add mods in the future, you can do that. All right, guys. Hope that helps. I think that's all the information that you need to get everything working. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me a, a text message or a PM, and I'll be ha or just comment on the video, and I'll be happy to answer for you. Um, other than that, ready to go for this Sunday and start some uh, IL-2 World War II action. See you guys soon.